Hi, everyone. I'm Sadaf Jaffer, and I'm the chair of the Inclusion and Equity Committee here in Montgomery Township. As part of this year's Juneteenth commemoration, we've invited James Howard, Executive Director of the Black Inventors Hall of Fame, to join us for a discussion about his work. Welcome, James, and thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Sadaf, for having me. Could you tell uh, me a bit about the Black Inventors Hall of Fame and how you became involved in this work? Black Inventors Hall of Fame is one of my more recent passion projects uh, of many. Um, and at its core, its purpose is to enlighten the community, um, not just the African American community, but the community at large, and to the tremendous contributions of African Americans over the past 500 years. Uh, and in doing so, uh, his purpose is to allow individuals to realize that those contributions have made significant, significant inroads to the successful development of this country. And how did you get involved in this work? Could you say a little bit about your professional background and, and how you got involved in this type of, of work? Interestingly enough, it did come directly through my professional background. I was a guest speaker on a television uh, show last June uh, for a local television program, and they were um, asking about my history and my patents, of which I have about 18 or 19 patents and have designed hundreds of products and have taught design history uh, with an emphasis on social impact. And at the end of the program, the moderator had asked, uh, you know, is there any place someone can go to find out about, you know, your inventions and previous inventors that you lecture on when you're on the lecture circuit? And my answer was, I'm not sure. I don't believe there is. And it was that moderator that had actually suggested a Hall of Fame. And the idea just stuck, you know, it planted in my head. And two or three weeks later, we were pursuing a Black Inventors Hall of Fame nonprofit uh, application. Is there one example of a Black inventor that you think most Americans don't know enough about or that you could share with us just to enlighten us a little bit? Sure. Well, I tell the story of Onesimus. And Onesimus is a uh, 18th century, early 18th century uh, slave who had uh, developed uh, smallpox uh, during the time when the town of Boston had actually uh, developed smallpox and many of its uh, residents uh, were coming down with it and dying from it. And Onesimus, um, slave master, uh, just absolutely refused to listen to him when he tried to plead to him that he had an answer to this problem that is uh, wreaking havoc on the community. Uh, and the slave master again kept telling him to just be quiet. I'm not interested. He didn't trust Onesimus any word that he would say. In fact, he often kept an eagle eye on Onesimus for fear that he was stealing things from the house and stuff like that. So anyway, one day the town doctor happened to hear of uh, this procedure that Onesimus kept explaining to uh, his master could work. And the town doctor said, look, Let's uh, pause and stop and listen to this man for a moment, this slave. And it turns out the reason why he stopped to pause is because his own son had just come down with smallpox. So he had an additional reason to lend an ear. And so when Onesimus demonstrated the procedure directly to the doctor, the doctor decided to take that procedure and apply it to over 200 people in the town with 98% success results. 98%. So in many respects, what people don't know, and this is a very timely moment to reveal this, is that Onesimus is actually the father of vaccines. It was the inoculation process that he demonstrated to the Western world for the first time, and it was successful, and it is the exact same process that is utilized today to develop vaccines. Now, move one step further. 75 years later, Sadat, the credit for the invention of vaccines was given over to an Englishman by the name of Jenner. So you put those two lines together and it tells you exactly why Black Inventors Hall of Fame is so necessary. Thank you so much for sharing that. 
Do you mm -hmm. have thoughts on how we could ensure that our educational system does integrate this knowledge better? I think one way to do it is for mankind, white, black, green, or indifferent, to develop a keener sense of empathy for one another across all boards. Empathy should not have a color. Respect should not have a color, nor gender. And so when you start with empathy, you're able to pretty much receive care and concern and realize the depths of importance of knowledge and information like this. You're not in denial. You're not envious of it. You're not uh, jealous of it. You're just a receiver of knowledge to better your own uh, community and to better uh, mankind uh, in general. So I would say uh, one way is to first teach empathy, not necessarily the subject matter. We need to plant our knowledge base on fertile soil and that soil is enriched when we have an empathetic heart and mindset. Um, and then the rest can just flow in naturally and we can grow as a community. So before we started recording, we were discussing this concept of perpetual optimism. And I wanted to ask you about that. Why do you think it's important and what does it mean to you? I think it's very important because as in the analogy of chasing a carrot on a stick, we can look at the carrot as optimism. And in that analogy, you chase that carrot, but you never quite catch up to it. And so in that example, we have the notion of continually pursuing optimism and continually driven to seek good things. And as a result, I think that you are able to uh, become more fulfilled. I look at the analogy of in our early parts of our lives, we seek this first mountain, accolades, promotions, salary increases, and so forth and so forth. And then as we get older and become wiser, we begin to transition over to that second mountain. And the second mountain is more analogous to seeking that carrot perpetually. And that is because you are now more concerned about serving the needs of mankind and not your own. So perpetual optimism is truly about being a human-centered individual who is continually, continually, at all costs, uh, seeking to meet the needs of mankind and being more concerned with that than their own selfish uh, needs. Yeah. And that understanding starts with here, what's in here. Not so much here, it's, it's actually, it starts here because unfortunately it is our minds that really sets us on many of the negative pathways toward hatred and toward bitterness and so forth. Because unfortunately, the brain, particularly the logic side of the brain, is set up to protect you. It is wired to protect you. And you get this false sense of protection when you want to hate someone. You get this false sense of protection when you feel as if you are deserving of something and that community is not deserving of something. So we really need to get more in connection with our heart and our compassion for one another and then move forward. Any final messages for the Montgomery community? I believe that uh, in my experience with working with your students uh, a couple of years ago, um, it was a, a very a revealing process to me how this is a community that is still very sensitive to its past and a community that is trying to extend a bullhorn out to all of the various complexities and, and uh, races and communities that contributed to its past. So I would say uh, Montgomery Township just continue to do what you've been doing because you have set an excellent precedent uh, in the project work that I was uh, fortunate enough to be involved with last year with the uh, Princeton students. So just keep on keeping on. Thank you so much. And thank you as, as well for being a part of that project. Uh, as we try to understand and learn more about our past and our present so that we can have a more inclusive future. That is, I think, the goal of everyone uh, in leadership at the township, certainly the Inclusion and Equity Committee. Um, so thank you so much for everything that you've done, for your really important work, and certainly for joining us today. It's my absolute pleasure. Thank you. Okay, take care.